Thank you for joining me for another episode of the Bring Back Soul Music Podcast. I'm here with three special, special ladies, Dolores, Denise, and Bonnie from the group Sky or Ladies of Sky. Uh, ladies, how you doing today? Oh, we're wonderful, great. Wonderful. Great. Fantastic. Happy to be here with you, Todd. That's for sure. Oh, you're not more happy than I am that you're here. So, uh, like I said, I grew up... Um, and I don't want to date myself, but I grew up listening to you. Uh, and I'm so glad you're here. I really, I really appreciate it. Um, we're going to talk about 2023 because you guys got some things going on in 2023 that I think people are going to be very excited about. Uh, but let's go back a little bit. Um, now, tell me where are you from and how did you all get into... Oh, by the way, like I was telling... Um, you guys earlier, I didn't realize you all were sisters too, but yeah. we'll, we'll get into all of that. Yeah. Um, Look at these faces. Can't you tell if we all came from the same place? Okay, I'm gonna leave that one alone. I'm not going, I'm not gonna go there with you. It's the smile. It's the smile. Now. Okay, it's the it's smile. We'll go smile. with that. Um, but let's let's talk about how you guys got, got your start. Now you guys are from New York City, right? Or New York, I'm sorry. Brooklyn. Brooklyn. How did you guys all get get started? Oh my Ooh. goodness. So we got started. Well, I guess if you want to go like from inception, um, we got our musical instruction in high school, junior high school and high school. We were always involved in chorus and that sort of set a bit of a platform um, for us from the performing perspective. So after we did, you know, all the talent shows and uh, at that time they had these things called sing, uh, where uh, groups of students got together to perform by grade and compete by grade. Um, after graduation from high school, we had a little band going and uh, we started doing little local, you know, local stuff in the neighborhood community events. And um, we babysat for a guy who was the director of the Miss Black America New York State pageant back when they used to have those pageants. I'm not even sure if they still have them now. No, but... I don't think they do. Yeah. Probably and, not. Um, yeah, so so we, uh, we, we were asked to perform. He knew how good we sang, and he told the musical director, these girls can really sing. You got to, you know, you got to check them out. So uh, the musical director was like, okay, we'll just, I'll be the judge of that, okay? I'll decide right. whether they're good or not. Right. And so we did Old Man River a cappella. At the time, there were four of us. We had a, a fourth person that sang with us. And uh, after we finished with that, tearing the house down, he looked at us and he was like, yeah, they really can sing. So that guy was Randy Muller of Brass Construction. Right. He was the musical director for the pageant. And so once we got tied up with Randy, right, Bonnie? That was pretty much the, once the we start. Once we got tied up with, with Randy, Randy really, uh, I have to really, we always have to thank Randy because he was an a integral part of us progressing in this business. We started to, to open up for brass construction um, and do different, you know, different places. And then when they got their uh, first record deal, it was like so many of us. And then they got the record deal and then they started to go on the road. And Randy didn't want to just like leave us in the lurch. So he introduced us to Solomon Roberts, who was actually the photographer for the New York State, Miss, Miss New York State Black America pageant. And we didn't even know he was a musician, right, Wanda? Yeah, absolutely. Because he was a photographer at the time for the Miss Black America State Finals in New York. And um, we'd see him just like around with his cameras or whatever. And um, and then it, all of a sudden when, when, when Brass Construction, you know, got their record deal and Randy said, well, okay, um, y'all got, y'all got girls got too much going on, you know, in, in terms of our talent. So I'm going to turn you over to Solomon. And we were like, huh? What? And to then do what? We went, <laughs> right, exactly. So it was like, well, okay. And, and, and real, not realizing that Solomon was a, was a drummer at the time. Um, and, and also, um, 
to go back a little bit, Randy was also an integral part of us uh, learning how to be in the studio. We did b background vocals for Mark Redis yeah. and um, Raphael and Charles Charles. Berlin. So he gave us that start and 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 groomed us for the studio. But once we got together with Solomon and and Annabelle Sierra, who we call Butch, and uh, Jerry Lebon, our bass player. Um, and then at the time, there was also a Butch Miller, which was part of um, Solomon's group at the time. He switched off and started playing drums and, and uh, Solomon started playing guitar. So we would do more local stuff, but we were still, yeah. you know, progressing on and on and on. A forward motion, as I call it. Okay. Uh, let me back up just a little bit. So growing up, uh, did you did you guys sing in a church or how did you guys... You know, I guess what I'm asking, you know, how did you guys decide that? Was well, this something that you guys was, always wanted to do just from being kids to well, uh, you, do? Well, my goodness, work? Bonnie loves to tell the story about how we used to sing at home, Bonnie. That's your that's your yeah. story to tell. <laughs> our, our mom used to let, uh, we would get in front of that mirror in the project. She had this long mirror on her closet door. And the three of us would get in front of this mirror and we would just be singing and singing and singing. And then we would start singing like three different songs. I don't see how we didn't really drive our poor mother crazy. She was but crazy. she would <laughs> let us, we, I mean, just, and she would say, okay, now, okay, now. And it was like, that was enough. And then music was a part of our household. Where I mean, Saturdays was the day you got up, you cleaned up. Daddy would put on those LPs, those 33s, and we would all get in there and we would be singing and we would be cleaning. And so I think music really was in our bones from a very young age because we were watching Ted Mack, original amateur hour, Ed Sullivan. We were watching all of these, you know, uh, talent uh, musical shows on TV. And so I think we really got the bug. And then we had an aunt who sang opera. Yeah, our aunt, my dad's, uh, my dad's sister, Aunt Sadie, uh, was an opera singer. And um, it wasn't until we actually did the unsung that I realized just how, uh, how, you know, the circles that she traveled in as far as black opera was concerned during that time. I really got an amazing history lesson, but our our really roots in terms of where we learned to sing professionally came from high school. We yes. went to high school during a time when music programs were just as important as any other academic program. It was a it was a requirement to graduate along with art. And so I think all of us were in chorus every year. You only needed one year of music. Right. I know for myself. I took my lunch hours. I would eat, and then I would go in to be in chorus all yeah. four and, and this is oh, the yeah. artist, this is the artist thing. I didn't start out singing. Mm. I started out playing the clarinet, and I loved playing the clarinet. And then, like Denise said, we there was a fourth member, and at that time, it was just Denise Dolores and our friend Deborah. I didn't sing with them because I wasn't in high school at that time and went to a talent show and saw them, the three of them perform. And I said, oh no, that is what I want to do. And so they snuck me in <laughs> the next year <laughs> to sing in the talent show. <laughs> yeah, right, right. But that's where, you know, we, we really learned how to sing properly. And I think that is um, a tribute actually to why we're able to still, you know, maintain our vocal abilities to this day, because we really had excellent, excellent training, um, you know, through chorus in high school. Okay. Um, so music was always around. Uh, let me ask always. you, I mean, now it's just you three, but do you have other siblings who just you three? Yeah. Just oh, us three. Okay. My mother decided early on after she had me. And the interesting thing is we're very close in age. Like yeah. it, there is a point in the year where we're literally almost a year apart because my mother was a firm believer that she didn't want to have an only child. And she said she always would want to have a, enough children so that each of us would have somebody to play with. And so she made good on that, you know what I'm saying, by just, just having the three of us. After Bonnie, the, the cute story is that her name is, my dad's name was Benjamin. 
Okay. And, and her name is Benita. And right. my mother said, that is the closest thing you're going to get to a boy. That's because <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> so it's just us three. <laughs> okay. Now, um, how did, okay, let's move forward a little bit. So how did you guys end up with uh, Sky? How did that, all that happen? So once we met Solomon, um, he, again, their band was called Fuel at the time. And, and we were the Sounds of Soul, I guess, by then. Yeah. Um, so. Yeah. And so, uh, and Dyla Ray. We were Sounds of Soul and yeah. Dyla Ray. Um, <laughs> but, but Solomon and Randy uh, started to collaborate on writing uh, music. And we wound up uh, realizing, like, we did a couple of little personnel changes in what ultimately became Sky. So we replaced the guy Butch Miller with Gerald Lebon. Um, and Solomon <laughs> and Randy just started recording um, and bringing us into the studio. And literally, we recorded the whole first Sky album uh, with crazy. them, with the, those two guys. And then they shopped it around. And then mm -hmm. the next thing we knew, we were signing contracts with Sal Soul Records. So that's how the band kind of formed uh, once we got rid of uh, Butch Miller. And, and Yeah, and, we replaced uh, him with Tommy. Yeah, we replaced right. him with Tommy McConnell. And then we realized that this thing, following in kind of the footsteps of Brass Construction, because that was kind of the good news, because Randy had already established Brass Construction, um, um, he also worked with a lot of other local Brooklyn bands as well. Uh, right. So he had kind of set the pace for coming up out of what we call the Brooklyn basements uh, and getting into the professional world. So the two of them recorded the entire album, shopped it around. We wound up getting the record deal with Sal Soul. And then we're like, OK, now we got to come up with a name for this this uh, this band of, of musicians. <laughs> <So. laughs> So we sat around and we were thinking, oh, wow, what, what can we call ourselves? Why, you know, what's going to be our, our name? And it, because we kind of came out in the late 70s when Star Wars, Star Trek, you know, all of those were very popular themes uh, of the time. Um, and everybody else was a funk this or a funk that. We said, oh, you know what? Um, we came up with the name Sky. And Sal um, said, hey, why don't we add the extra Y? And the idea was because music, just like the sky and, you know, the universe is ever changing, has various elements available to it. So we wanted to be able to do different types of music, provide different types of feelings from that music. And I think we kind of accomplished that, actually, when I look at, you know, our legacy of 10 albums, I think we've covered covered a lot, you know. Yeah, I noticed looking at back at your catalog, um, seemed like most of the albums have the word sky in there somewhere. Yeah. So uh, and I'm sure that was intentional. Um, coming from New York, um, I just was reading the other day, doing some research on on you ladies. All the groups that came out of New York around that time, uh, there was a lot of talent uh in New York. Uh Sky, I remember Change. Uh, Chic, BT Express, BT Express yeah. Brown uh, Heights Affair. Yeah. Um, and I'm, I don't know if Cameo was around your era or were they? They were in our era, but they didn't come. I don't believe they came from New York. I no, okay. no, they came from some um, they, they, yeah, they weren't New Yorkers. Yeah, okay. there was a guy that, that, that Randy produced named Cameron. He was out of, uh, he what? was out of, New he York. was out of Brooklyn, but Cameo was not. Okay, and, and then I think uh, so was um, uh, Billy o Billy Ocean. No, Billy. Uh, can't remember his name right now. Yeah, okay. no, the, the Caribbean Queen. Oh, Billy Ocean. Yeah. 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 Okay. Jamaica, yeah that's right. uh, did you guys run into Luther? Luther's from New York too, right? Luther Vandross. Uh, we uh, did uh, one uh, one uh, show uh, with him. Oh, yeah, we okay. did. Actually, we did a couple of shows with a him, you know, over over the years, you know, in touring um, yeah. when uh, when his when he was at sort of the height of his career. Um, and I actually it's funny, I I actually tried to audition for change uh, um, uh, for a hot second, but fell back into my comfort zone. Okay. <laughs> <What's that? laughs> Stick with the people I know, you know, oh, OK. <laughs> Um, now, uh, I guess the, the song that put you guys on the map or was call me, 
Um, what was before that? Because you guys had another album before. We had three albums before. Three albums yeah, before that. Albums. And that's just the mm-hmm. one song that kind of blew you guys out. Well, that's the song that really gave us national and international recognition. Because wow. um, we had done, the first song we did uh, off the first album was First Time Around. And that's where we can kind of claim that we uh, produce disco music because that yeah. was very uh, right. relatable to the clubs. And especially here in New York, we got a lot of airplay because it still had all of that, you know, kind of club disco kind of feel to right. it. Um, and Here's to You was also uh, had a pretty good run as well but that we were more popular even not even in new york actually we were more popular down in uh, south of browns mills new jersey i'll never forget the first gig we ever got was oh in my a, god uh, browns mills new jersey and we were very popular in philadelphia dc all of, we lived in DC. down that way south carolina before yeah. we were really famous here in new york um but with with the call me and the skyline album my goodness, that thing just catapulted us into not only na- regional, but national and international attention because Call Me was just seemed like it hit a nerve with everybody. So that's when we became more well known, you know, across the country. Uh, and I was just going to, I was, that was one of my questions. Were you ready for that? But you said you guys had some success, at least locally or on the East Coast before that so you guys were probably pretty ready yeah well i'll put it to you well yeah ready body would you say we were ready or we got ready yeah ready you know there's two different readies okay we were not ready for that Um, you know what i'm saying we definitely wasn't ready right we had done you know, we were doing a bigger a little bit bigger shows yes by the time call me came out, but we never would have thought that one minute call me hit the 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 airwaves and then two weeks later, three weeks later, call me is gold and they're telling us, oh, you're going out on the road with cool in the gang. Oh wow. The six and months. and uh, we got the call, an uh, immediate call from Soul Train. Soul Train. I think that was sort of the the thing that got it off to the to the bang bang of a start. So so we we re- the, the song started being played. Radio stations are picking it up left and right across the country. Within four weeks, we were getting yep. a call to come and do Soul Train. We had not even rehearsed the song. So when you say ready, no, we were not ready, but we right. got ready. And yes. we started working really hard to put a routine together for the song. And then the next thing you we know, as Bonnie said, we wound up uh, being the opening act for Cool in the Gang on a 13-month tour. It was the longest tour that we've ever, ever. done in our career. Wow, amazing. Um, and I was home for half of that. Now, how old were you guys? Uh, we roughly, were young. Oh rough, my goodness. Yeah, I was about to say you guys that had to be 80, um, uh, 20, we were 30. 20, 20, like, we didn't look yeah. it, but we were we were 30. A lot of people think we were teenagers or you know we were, not teenagers. We were 30 years old yeah. when uh call me uh um went you I, know I started can tell to you I was actually 27 years old. Yeah, wow. well, you're three years younger than me. Yeah, so that was, was me right. 30. I was, yeah, <laughs> right. I was so that 29. Meant that Right, exactly. Yeah. So we were like Denise said. People thought that we were younger than when what we were when we went. You know, started got, going out on the uh, road. You know, like that. But you know, call me just was like it was a whirlwind. Yeah. It was a whirlwind um, that that you. That I don't think you're really anybody really is ready for that. Like just all of a sudden. Right. But I think I think um, in terms of professionally, w- we were more ready than we could have imagined because we had yeah. already had now at this point um, right. excellent experience going into the studio and recording. So we had that down pat. Um, we knew what it was like 
to, to go out on the road, except that we hadn't quite graduated to the big tour buses yet because we used to go around, travel all over the country in a van bad. with the guys driving. Oh, so, right. you know, now all of a sudden the game gets kind of stepped up. But I, I think we owe a lot of our um, success really to Solomon because he's an excellent manager and to our road manager, Ron Saunders. Right. Um, because Ron was a master at the technical side. You know, there's a lot more involved. People think you just get up and go and, and there you are. No, there's a lot of rehearsals involved in advance and a lot of preparation that's involved. Um, and I think it, it, was, it was a time where we were grateful that our mother wouldn't let us go out um, and sign a record deal in high school. I, I remember we had an offer um, to sign with Motown, me and my sisters, oh, because wow. our musical, one of the musical directors of the band in our high school had a connection. And he's like, you guys are great. You could be like Sister Sledge, you know, I'll do that da, 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 and we'll get you out there. And he came and had a conversation with my mother and mommy said, nope, 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 nope they not nope, nope, no, nope. no, no. <laughs> so when I look at that moment and then pan to <clears throat> our more mature selves and this thing really happening for us, um, I was grateful to mommy actually that she didn't send us out because right. you have to be prepared for that. It's a lot yeah. of hard work, you know, going from city to city. Um, sometimes gigs go well, sometimes gigs don't go so well. And there's a lot, just a lot of influences and things that you could find yourself caught up in if you're not really mature and prepared, you know, to receive all of that. And, to, and I think know, too, to, because you know, um, as, as children growing up, um, we did a lot of traveling. Right. Um, yeah. we, every summer, exactly right. we're in the station wagon, off we go. We knew how to read a map better than the guys in the band. Right. <laughs> because my father <laughs> said so. Okay. This that was before you GPS, know. just for, no, you know, right. for some of your listeners that don't know what we're right. talking about. Right. 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 The Grand <laughs> McNally map, and you figured it out. And this is one of the things, you know, going across the country and, and in different, you know, just get in the car and off we went. We kind of knew how to how to navigate and travel That's because right. of my dad. You know, mm. let, let's get in the car, let's go. Yeah, speaking of traveling, uh, I was telling, um, I was telling Bonnie um, that, I went to the Bay Area this weekend and we drove from Southern California to Northern California and we're listening to series, series uh, FM or AM radio, series, series, XM. series XM, excuse me. And yeah. you guys came on like three or four times through that whole seven hour trip. On the really? Yeah. That's the yeah. On the yeah. And I was telling my sister, my brother-in-law, I said, oh, you know, I'm interviewing them next week. And they were like, get out of here. I was like, yeah. And it was just so ironic that it just came right. on three or four times. So you yeah. guys are still in heavy rotation apparently that yeah. is the good news that's the good news todd i'm telling you yeah. we um you know when the band in 93 when we had our last record uh deal contract with uh atlantic records and the band broke up uh, it was because of the very thing you're talking about um that we were still being played on the radio there's still a lot of relevancy to the music that we created um, that we decided to become ladies of sky. Right. And we we were like, you know, we can't let the the art and the thing that we are just go by the wayside. And, um, you know, because we had such a passion for uh, this music and the business of music, we, we did the ladies of sky thing all this time since 93 time. up until now um, and have had interest worldwide interest we uh, as ladies of sky we've been to africa we've been to france oh, wow. uh, because the music is just that popular you know it's around dumb. the country and the world mm. amazing 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 um <laughs> yeah it's um it's it's quite a career i would say and um but let's let's go back so who are some of the artists that you you worked with uh, you said you toured with Cool in the Gang coming out. Um, and who else? It, we have worked with we have worked with Stevie Wonder. We have worked with Quincy Jones. We have worked with Aretha Franklin. We've worked with Patti LaBelle. 
We Patty work Austin. with the Wolfpins. We work with the OJs. Temptation. Oh, no, you, you just you just showing off. Dennis now. Edwards. Come on, temptation. You just showing off now. Well, you know what? We don't, we, we don't even think about it until we start relating. <laughs> <laughs> Because we're like the fans, That's you know, we gonna get our autographs too, believe it or not. Wow. <laughs> oh yeah. yeah. I mean, I definitely got my Quincy Jones. It was Jones. over. It was yeah, over. I ran in that up. dressing room like a little kid, um, mm -hmm. and, and walked around with her her makeup on my glasses for a couple right. of days because I was so enamored, you know. It's but like, okay, you show it off that. Parliament <laughs> Funkadelic. We had the whole P Funk. Oh my goodness. Guy, that band. Curtis, you know. Bob. Okay. SOS. Wow. Yeah. Um, so that kind of leads me to another question. Um, you guys, uh, clearly your music has staying power. Uh, like I said, I've heard it three or four times going to the Bay Area. And, um, but what do you think about music today? Um, I was telling another interview last week that, you know, you don't see bands anymore. You know, you don't see, really, you don't really see groups anymore. It's usually solo artists. Uh, and I know times change, but but what's your what's you guys take on that? What's your ladies take on that? So some of it I like. Some I of it I have don't like. um I have come to understand that there, while the the um the stuff that's not so creative or great takes uh, takes a greater prominence in people's minds, there are a lot of really good artists younger artists that are actually cranking out some great R&B music. And I think because the field now is so very wide and vast, you know, back then there was a channel through which you heard music, you know, um, when the Motown sound came out, you know what I'm saying? You had those specific terrestrial radio stations that played that. But now with uh, uh, streaming and cable and you know what I mean? There's it, it's the field is so wide open that sometimes you wind up missing the people that are really producing really good, you know, music. So I don't, I don't necessarily want to stay in the lane of some of this stuff and the more popular stuff is not so great, you know, from our perspective, because it's, it's, it's promulgating violence and sexuality. And, you know, I don't want to dwell on that. I really would like to say that there are uh, a, a group of artists out here, young artists that are really doing, you know, good music and yeah. you just have to seek it out. That's all. Yeah. We'll continue our episode after this message. Are you looking for a reliable way to transfer money to family and friends? Check out the Cash App. It's safe, easy, and convenient. Just download the app from the Apple or Google Play Store and start receiving and sending money in a few minutes. Sign up today and receive $5. And don't forget to use our referral code. VGRC WQX. Swag at shop.bringbacksoulmusic.com. Hey, I'm Kenny Lattimore, and you're checking out the Bring Back Soul Music Podcast with my brother Todd Woodson. Now, back to our conversation. Well, I, you know what? Uh, this is this thing. <clears throat> There's a thing, Denise. What's this the thing, Bonnie? <laughs> this, this, that's, that's a sister thing. thing. That's a sister right. thing, right? It's what a thing. thing. I personally don't listen to any of the music, really. Mm. I like, I catch stuff. That like you say, for instance, if I'm on social media or whatever, you know, and I'm looking at the reels, I can say I do catch. I I even tell Denise and them about some, you know, artists that I've heard. I I it might not necessarily know them by name, but there is good stuff, like Denise said, that is on the radio. I personally am a jazz person, oh. and I'm a really classic old school. You know, I listen to 88.3, which plays just like a big genre of different, you know, type of music. So it's like, uh, like Denise was saying, some of the stuff I'd be like, oh, my goodness. And then some of the stuff I'd be like, oh, you know, I listen to these different people, you know, on like Denise said, on stream and whatever. And there is really some good you know, there's really some good stuff. Now, if it's Bruno Mars, I'm going to listen to him. 
because Bruno's my second husband. I've claimed him as, <laughs> as a second okay. husband. You, because he brought the funk back. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Agree. And Agree. so there are, you know, if he comes out with something, I'm listening, you know, I'm listening. So I, there are really good independent artists out here. And it's just really sad that um, music um, has taken such a horrible turn. But I am glad that there are still musicians and vocalists that still have some integrity. You know, you raise a good point, because that's one of the reasons why I started the uh, the website and also the podcast, because I, I, I'm old school, too. And I, I just thought that I couldn't relate to um, the music that was out there. And I had a hard time finding the good mm -hmm. stuff. It's like yeah. the other stuff is being promoted so much. And I'm thinking, man, is this all that we have that mm. to listen yeah. to? You know, so is this what we're is this what we're relegated to? Yeah, because exactly. I, I like Bonnie. I don't listen to mainstream radio. I have Sirius XM in my car, so I go from um, the Groove Channel to Heart and Soul to um, the Soul Channel, which is now All Holiday Soul. I do Watercolors, which is jazz, and I'll even listen to some country on the highway. Mm. So okay. you had um, me until you said country. I can't do country. Oh, but, yes, but, yes, but I understand. There's some, oh, there's some we really good things not. on the highway on the highway channel that uh -huh. have had me rolling in the aisles or just singing and saying, "Okay, this makes a lot of sense." But I mean, you have to be into it. Hey, I was. It's just me. I um, you. I like Jill Scott Mesa, but once again, jazz is my thing. So I'm doing Candy Dalfa, Brian Culbertson, you know, Chris mm -hmm. Bodie. Bonnie yeah. James, you know, right. and, and those folks. But um, a lot of the things, like Bonnie said, I, I love Bruno Mars because he's brought back the funk. Yes, and there's exactly. some other people here and there that you hear, but unless they're playing them on the groove or heart and soul, um, I'm not listening to BLS or 103.9. I'm not listening to mainstream radio because they're not, first of all, I got, there's too many commercials. I don't want to hear all of that. Just play the music. Right. Right. Because so, if I'm riding, I want to ride. All right. And you mentioned along with uh, Bonnie that you, you you love jazz. Have you guys ever thought about doing a jazz album? Wow. Well, you know what? It's mm. not outside of the realm of possibility. Not, we we um, interestingly had an opportunity, two opportunities to actually record with people other than Randy and Saul. I mean, it's... Right. it's it's like we're almost married to them when it comes to writing and production after 10 albums, right? I mean, these are the guys that have been, you know, bringing music down the pike for us. But we've had an opportunity to do um, one song, which we collaborated with a French production team called AP Connection. And the song is called Love at First Sight. My husband and I wrote the song and my sisters did a sterling, beautiful, amazing, marvelous, wonderful job um, assisting on the vocals. Um, and then we also did a song, which I hope will see the light of day because unfortunately the producer <laughs> passed away. Um, oh. But it was a great song called My Way. Um, and it, for us, it's always been about trying to find a niche that represents us as the ladies of sky the next the next thing the next phase you know what i mean um but i like your idea of because possibly doing that and since the two of them love jazz so much and trust me we'll go into a studio to sing that a lot faster than they would <laughs> a lot faster <laughs> yeah. oh, because but, but think about this too um, um todd when we were in high school um, our music, our uh, choral teacher had an ensemble put together and we, and, and the most beautiful song um, by Duke Ellington, Mood Indigo, that was the, oh my goodness, song and to do in to high say. school. It's like, it was smooth, it was in the pocket, it was just, and and I think the, uh, all the, the, those of us who were in the ensemble were like, whoa, this was really good. And, and that's we felt what I'm good thinking. about singing it. We you had, we, because like Denise said, how we were taught music in school, the chorus sang jazz. Yeah. We did, we did from the Hallelujah chorus 
to show tunes, to jazz tunes. So it is not that far-fetched. And then we did background for a jazz artist, oh, Charles really? Brown. So mm. it's not that far-fetched that we couldn't pull off anything jazzy. I mean, our- it's family- awesome. Get Eli on the phone, our, our engineer yes. and producer. Yes. Get Eli on the phone. <laughs> Tell him <laughs> some jazz <laughs> stuff now. Todd has spanked it into the air, okay? Exactly. <laughs> so I think, you know what? We have, we, I mean, it's just like we, you, when you mentioned about us doing the jazz, it's just like, um, we think about it, Sky is not really known for their ballads. Mm. But if you go back into our album, Saul was the the epitome of ballad writer. And if people go back into our previous albums, some of the slow tunes on there are jazzy. And that's how he writes. And so uh, it wouldn't be far-fetched for us to do something like that. Okay. Well, you guys had one ballad I really love was Real Love. So. Yeah. That, yes. Oh, that's yes. Yes. That, yes. Right? That's Solomon. Right? That's another one of Solomon's like. Yeah. That's right. Really great, you know, great yeah. ballads. Um, he's a, he's and and ballad you're like writer. the second person today that said that to me, actually. Really? Thank really? You. Yeah. I, well, you know, I, I mean, I'll, I'll confess, I have a day job uh, mm-hmm. and um, I work with attorneys. And um, so now there's a whole crop of new folks that didn't know my other life and they're finding out. And so I'm like, oh, well, check this out, check that out. And one of the younger associates, and it makes me feel good because I'm talking about somebody in their mid twenties, early thirties, right. and they're rediscovering right. our music. You, you know what I mean? They're like, wait a minute, this stuff sounds really, really good. So for it to be um, still um, uh, t- that timeless, that it's appealing now to another generation of people, it really makes us feel really good. And that's why, you know, it kind of keeps us in perpetual motion to keep it going, you know? Yeah. I I believe that even that generation is getting tired of some of the music that's being played now. So they're they're getting to, to, to have an appreciation for that classic, for that old school, for that funk uh, music, you know, and for the, the R and B, the ballads, the slow stuff. They're really a lot of, I've heard a lot of, you know, even people in that generation say, look, I'm just so tired of some of the music that they play. Yeah, so things that are clean back. and you can dance to right. it. Right, and they're listening to this kind of stuff, so. You know. Yeah, I would imagine that uh, just by talking to other artists, I bet you guys are probably pretty big overseas too, because they, I think they have a healthy appreciation for R&B. Um, but that's just a guess. I don't know. No, well, you know what? You're absolutely right. Um, I don't know whether your listeners are aware, but France absolutely lives. They eat and breathe um, American funk music. And to yeah. this day, they have their a lot of their own writers, a guy that we worked with when we went there several years ago. Um, his name is Magoo. He everything that he writes it's fun. right to this minute has that flavor to it. Um, mm-hmm. uh, my so my friend Mustafa uh, and Zubida, everything that they oh, write, Zubida that is like out of the it, yeah, everything that comes out of and she she barely speaks English, but boy, she right. can really <laughs> deliver a lyric. <laughs> Right. In yeah. English, if it's on a funk tip, you know. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we do have some popularity over there, and and we are talking with um, a promoter um, who actually was trying to bring us there prior, just before the pandemic. I mean, my That's goodness, right. we were booked to go over there um, in March of uh, April of 2020, April or May. And wound up, you know, the, that's table. when the world shut down and we weren't able to go. But you're absolutely right. There is a lot of interest in um, um, American R&B funk music in particular. Yeah, yeah. I, I interview artists, uh, a lot of artists from England. And every time I ask them who were their influences, it's always Motown, uh, Michael Jackson, yeah. Stevie Wonder, Aretha Franklin. Mm-hmm. And a lot of these artists weren't even born. Why uh, at their at their heyday, you know what I mean. So, 
Uh, I think that music. And that's I, good. I like that. That 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 it's so organic uh, that it's just received. You know yeah. what I mean? With without thought, without question, and then in turn emulated. And so for that, you know, that's what that's what good music really is. You know, much like we're talking about the classics of jazz. If we're considered in that group um, by the young people today, then that's, you know, we've done our jobs just for, from my yeah. perspective. Yeah. And I just think that music from that era um, just has so much more staying power. I don't know who will listen to a lot of the music 10, 20 years ago that are out, that's out today. I, I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. I just. You know, my, my husband has a saying that these artists now have a shelf life of about four or five years, because then there's this turnover, mm -hmm. you know, of, of those, that group of individuals. Um, mm -hmm. And I, I, I just hope that at some point they all become more thoughtful. I was um, listening to a gentleman speaking today about how he got out of uh, the, the business because he saw the perpetuation of the, the worst uh, uh, attitudes and the, you, you know what I mean? Just right. what it's promulgating, what it's feeding into the minds of young people and, and young people of color in particular, it seems to, you know, it appeals to them because that's all that's being shoved down their throats. Secondarily, right. we also feel that the lack of music in the schools, we were, you know, are the foundation of who we are as artists comes from the availability, the free availability yeah. of being able to go in and express yourself through mm -hmm. singing, through dancing. We even had a, a Dolores was part of the, the dance group at our school um, through drama, through the arts. Oh, the next you know, class it's too. limited in, it's in the schools right. these it's days. And so, yeah. you, you, you know, so that's why, I mean, in the beginning when hip hop first came out, you know, we were insulted that they kept using our songs and sampling our stuff. I right. mean, in a, in a very kind of weird way, it's an homage, you know, they're paying uh, some kind of respect to our music, but I often wondered if it wasn't the result of them just simply not being able to create their own because they've never oh, what an original how to thought. play an instrument or, mm -hmm. you know, had any kind of formal uh, and and been exposed to other types of music. Had we not been exposed to all kinds of choral music, Fred Waring arrangements, they don't even know who Fred Waring is. They have no idea what I'm talking about. But it made us more well-rounded when it comes to our approach to music. And, so and I'm hoping so that well. that I mean, might you know change as time as time goes by. Because yeah. if you're not going to a performing arts school, you're, you're not, not getting, getting what we got. No. Right. I mean, you know, even when we were in elementary school, they would take us to plays. This mm. was a class trip. You were going into New York on a bus to go to a play. It it might not have been in English. A musical. I mean, why not? Of, this is part of how we grew up in school, from elementary school to high school. Oh, that's right. Things that was going on that enrichs you in terms of the arts, but they, the they kids don't the have that now. Yeah, you had the programs in school. There, yeah. there are no programs like that in the public schools. But then that begs the question as to how the parents are enriching their children in and of themselves. But it that it's still it, it you can do that. But like Denise said, if it's not in that school where where because I I'm quite sure there's so many kids that are so interested in doing drama and and music and 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 dance and all of that but it's not there are really there's no around. outlet there's no outlet no in outlet school in which school is free place. see for us it was it, it was required That's That's right. Right. Now you have to um, pay even in bonnie's school bonnie's daughter bonnie's granddaughters are extremely gifted singers okay um but they, do they have a chorus in the school no, no. They have no, uh, they got all the sports programs. Oh, in they, the, all the sports programs. All, the you, if you want to play a sport, they have that. But, you know, and I don't know if that speaks to a lack of, of, of academicians, you know, who are involved in, in teaching music in the schools either. You know what I mean? But I think because it's just been basically eliminated as part of the regular curriculum, children are less exposed unless you have oh, good, parents. Fine. Like, like, like we expose our kids to all kinds of music. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So therefore they get an appreciation for it. 
people. Yeah, and I, I would agree that when you don't have that exposure, you don't learn to appreciate not just think about all the arts. Um, well, that is, yes. That is correct. I, yeah, I don't want to just limit it, you know, because yeah, even right. when it comes to drawing, sculpture, you know, painting, all that's those right. kinds of things are not, you know, you get it in kindergarten, you get it in pre-K, you know, because they want to keep you busy. But then, then once you, you go into in first, elementary. second and third grade, there, you know, it gets yeah, lost. Yeah. It gets lost. And I once think it hits it, that it, middle school, it's done. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and I think it, yeah, it negatively much. impacts children and their creativity, even when it comes to writing, you know, just say you want to write a book or you want to write a story. Um, young people, you know, today uh, have difficulty with the uh, with um, uh, uh, ELA, you know, the language and language arts, those kinds of things. They're not as proficient yeah. um, as as we were at the, you know, back in the day. So, you know, I just um I just feel like we are kind of we we make our we make sure that we make ourselves available to you know programs and and any type of uh, anybody that's trying to do anything right now I'm working with um the um <clears throat> excuse me the the uh, Ivy Hill Neighborhood Association they do a big music and uh, food festival every year in my neighborhood Ooh, and so I, one of the things that we noticed we performed for that event this year there were no young people performing in the festival. And mm -hmm. the one person that was performing yeah. was, you know, the worst language. You're at a family day event <laughs> and it doesn't even occur to you that you- I'm to say say you cuss words. In it? She said, of course. <laughs> mm. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, so I'm, 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 I'm making it from. my business. My oven is going to off, I'll be right out, there. You know, Okay. Yeah, go ahead. Um, I'm making um, I'm making it my business to. I put myself basically. I spoke to the guy that's running, and I said, "Listen, I would love to try and d get some talent out of. We have an arts high school here. I've reached out to them. I'm reaching out to the different schools so that children can see other children doing this, and maybe it'll be of some inspiration to them. Oh, I so for sure. It's, it's for attainable sure. for them as well. You know, right." Um, let's back up a little bit. Now, when was the last album that you released? So we released our last album in 1993. That was okay, the okay. Nearer to You album uh, right. with Atlantic Records. Okay. Why, why, why there? Why stop there? Um, how come no more albums? The after that? Stop us there. Yeah, the we style that, of that, music. that whole hip hop. Came okay. About, okay. You know it started yeah. to rise. It started to rise. And it's interesting. It we were on tours with a lot of <clears throat> hip hop artists hip um, in the beginning. And then we were opening for the hip hop artists. Really? At the end. And again, as you mentioned, <clears throat> the death of the band. Bands. Yeah. You know what I mean? And promoters started to see hey, I could bring a uh, uh, a guy, two guys, and a turntable out there. I don't even have to get, um, you know, pay, pay musicians to come out and and perform. What, you know, why should we do that when we can get, yeah. you know, a couple of guys and a couple of females? Um, oh, now, don't get me wrong, because we loved Sequence, you know. Uh, 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 oh, yeah, Angie B. Fast to Flash, Furious Five. We, we, we yeah. love them guys, you know. Uh, oh, yeah, no, to the Hill Gang, them. you know, we... But but that's what changed the whole style of music changed. Yeah. And so, you know, um, by 1993, we were being replaced even by the record labels with now just at, at that point. Now you also got the 90s New Jack Swing era coming in. Right. So interestingly, when you look at what that really is, it's only the Temptations and the Four Tops. You know, it's like the circle that came about. So now all of these groups are now emulating Guy, you know, uh, they're emulating the the three man group, the Delphonics, you know, yeah, the boys that we grew up with. They we'll started imagine. to emulate that, but they did have a really fresh, you know, kind of sound, musical sound in the nineties. Yeah, yeah, I think I read somewhere where they said the the drum machine and the synthesizer just kind of ruined bands altogether. It did. It did. Elect oh, wow. right electronics and the movement forward. Got it, Bonnie. I'm sorry. Uh, no, that's okay. The feel was going. Yeah, you know right. what I'm saying. That right. the, I know you could crank out 
10 songs in a week where yeah. we were in the studio for a year. Oh, wow. <laughs> well, <laughs> basically, it seems elongated. Mean, it wasn't quite yeah, that long. Yeah, yeah. We would be in that studio between not just, and, and I'm, I'm not talking about just vocals. I'm talking about the band going in, then the vocals, then the overdubs, and then yeah. there, we then would the clap be track, then the studio. party track. Right, then the party track, then the clap track, then the... <laughs> So we would be in that studio like forever, where as mm -hmm. all of a sudden, mm -hmm. you know, people are sitting up and all in that 24 hours and you crank out a, a whole entire album, you yeah. know? Yeah. So the feel that electronics came in and it took away, like you said, the bands. But mm. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's yeah. I mean, I, I don't know. I sometimes the I, feel, you yeah. know what I'm saying, right? And I know times change, tastes change, but man, I sure miss bands though. You know, I just you know, Parliament. Yeah. I'm from Vallejo, where Confunction is from, and uh, just so many great bands back then. It's just it's sad that you don't see new yeah. bands coming out, but you know, and it's Funny, that's the one thing about jazz that will never change. Mm, yeah, there's always a band. I right. went to I went to Smoke Jazz Club um, two weeks ago, and I saw Lauren Talese, who is this amazing singer. And it was a piano player, an upright bass, a drummer, and a guitar player. And she was singing her shoes off. I've seen her at least five times. But whenever you see a jazz, you know, set of folks. They're not doing this to the track. The people are there. Right. right. And that's the difference between where R&B has gone to where jazz has always stayed. Yeah, I, I agree. I agree. And I didn't really think about it that way, but you're yeah. right. You can't yeah. you can't replace instruments in jazz. You know, that's you can't right. synthesize can't. jazz. Nope. Right. Nope. That's right. That's right. Nope. You can't. All it's right. Pure. Well, let's. Let's talk about something a little bit more pleasant now. I mean, yes, let's let's get into something else now. 2023 is right around the corner. Talk to us about what's going on in at least the early part of 2023. Um, oh, my goodness. That's all we got. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, you know, the good news is um, in January, well, in December, December 2nd, uh, BMG Records, which owns the Sal Soul Records catalog, Mm -hmm. uh, contacted us and uh, we came to find out that they were re-releasing a uh, a lot of their number one disco, they call it Disco Essentials is, is what this particular, you know, uh, uh, releases are called. So they they decided that they were going to, because again, there's a, there's a young group of marketers now in the record company. And they're starting to hear all this stuff and, you know, putting this stuff. And they're like, wait a minute, this stuff is great. We got to re-release it. So we uh, ha have the privilege of having the Skyline album uh, on January the 20th being re-released on vinyl, purple vinyl, and apparently remastered, whatever that means. Uh, but January the 20th, yes, uh, Skyline, our number one million seller gold certified gold album is going to be re-released and so with that with that with that we got the bright idea what did we get the bright idea to do body <laughs> we got yeah. the bright idea to get the band back together you know, <laughs> you know how they say oh we're going to get the band back together and so I think what happened was we gave Solomon the bug mm. because uh, we would go visit him, you know, and he would see all the stuff that we were doing. And then in light of this, the re-release, I do, do, I'm so glad that he did get the bug. Because people are always asking about the guys, how's the band, how's the band, how's the guys? Oh, y'all should get, you know, y'all should do a reunion. And so on February 25th of 2023, Sky will grace the stage once again. Hey. For the grand 
reunion. And, yeah, and I think he really got the bug when we did uh, when our drummer Tommy passed away, right. and um, right. they asked yes, us to do um, a tribute. You know, just to do a few songs um, at at his re at his memorial service, okay. um, and and that was back in March. And right. I could see the excitement in Solomon's face. It was like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. And then when we found out that they were gonna re-release the Call Me album, he was like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. I could see the twinkle in his eye. And he was like, yeah, okay. Yeah, he got the bug. All right. Yeah. And, and so, they bugging, trust me. <laughs> okay. So are you guys excited about getting the band back together and performing? Yeah, it's... <laughs> Extremely. Oh right. my goodness. It's, 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 it's different. It's so, it is so much fun now. You know, you know, back in the day, sometimes, some days, it was like, oh, we got to go to rehearsal. Oh, we, you know, but we are, what it is, is that we've now come sort of into our own in right. terms of right. having yeah. control over the ladies of Sky. So we don't right. feel so born along. We feel like we're in step with everything that's about to start happening wow. for us. And we're kind of driving the wheel or uh, driving the bus a little bit. Um, but, and because we have been performing all these years, yeah, everything is very fresh in our minds in terms of from the performance perspective, from the routines and all of that kind of stuff. So I think we're a little bit more ready and they have to kind of get ready because right. they haven't really played together in such a long time. So, oh, wow. Um, okay. yeah. yeah. So it's, uh, so we yeah, have Solomon Roberts, uh, yeah. of course, uh, on, on uh, rhythm guitar. guitar. We have um, uh, Larry Greenberg, our original, right, our first keyboardist, we actually had three keyboardists over the history of Sky, but we have Larry on board. We have Gerald Legbone, our bass player on right. board. Uh, right. And now we've had to do two substitutions. So one is the drummer, of course, because of Tommy's passing. So we've got like the sweetest guy, Peter, uh, Peter. Uh, who's now going to be stepping in. And that was a, for Solomon, quite the decision to make because from the band perspective, the, 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 the groove has got to be there. You know what I mean? So he was able to get that down pat. And then um, Butch Sierra, our guitarist is working on some health challenges. He's actually has to have his shoulder replaced. Uh, mm -hmm. So he won't be able to play, but we have a great guy by the name of Mark right. Bowers who uh, I heard play with some friends of ours. And I'm like, that guy, if I close my eyes, he sounds just like Butch. So we got a chance our uh, for this weekend for the first time to meet them, right, yes. Bonnie? <laughs> oh, my goodness. It was, it was it's such, and, and it's odd because Peter and Gerald, the bass player, are, have been friends some, from before. Mm. So the, the thing is, I was actually saying this to Peter's uh, wife and was actually saying it to Mark. It's it's one thing to have substitutions, but it's another thing to have substitutions that you actually form a relationship with, a quick relationship. And so, like Denise said, coming down there and meeting them for the first time, it was like we had already known them 20 years ago. Mm. And okay. so they're, they're, the easy transition. Right. It was an easy day. Because we got to like you now. If we don't like you, you, you got to have that dry sense of humor. You got to have that sense of humor. Yeah, because we're cool. You know because we're kind of nutty. And so if we just melded so well and they listened to what we had to say mm. not only the them but saw like denise said because we've been driving the three of us have been driving that bus for a number of years just the three of us right and since so 1996 now, right oh, since wow. 96 so we are so present in what we do yeah. That now we can say, okay, this needs to sound like this, this, okay, can you do this here? And they're listening. Mm -hmm. And so the group, the, the, as soon as I started playing, I said, this is going to be good. Oh. Yeah. Okay. The groove, the groove is there. The groove okay. is there. 
Yeah. And the we should mention groove, everything is everything is flowing very nicely. Okay. You know? yeah. And and what what I appreciate about when when Denise was saying we can't do this here, we got to do this, 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 and this, and the drummer was saying, okay. Then I was watching how your body was moving. So there, as as opposed to having this like ego trip, like I'm a drummer, I know what I'm doing. They knew that they 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 knew that they needed to fall into the pocket that we've been in. Right. Right. Because we've been doing this. Right. And, and we so should mention that if you want this to be to be the way it's supposed to be, mm -hmm. then you need to roll in the groove that the girls are rolling in. Because, like, if 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 the front line ain't working, because the back line ain't working, that's a problem. Right. Because <laughs> then right. my sisters and I are thrown off. Right. Right. <laughs> and, and, All right. And we should mention that it's going to be at the cutting room on February yes. 2023 yes. in New York yeah. City. The Cutting Room in New York City. We chose that venue uh, as a starting point because it has a very comfortable feel. It's a pretty well-known musical venue here in New York. Uh, we didn't want to start out too big, you know, because no. we wanted to be successful. But from what I'm hearing, the tickets are selling like hotcakes. <laughs> oh, goody. <laughs> Our so I think they might, people might still be kind of interested in what we're doing. Yeah. Okay. Now, is this just going to be the, just a one concert or are you guys going to? So, so it, we are prepared and I think, you know, a, a lot of it was contingent upon Saul's desire to move forward. I mean, the right. reason why we moved forward as ladies of sky was because there came a point where Solomon was, you know, just like, okay, it's time for me to hang up my boots and my shoes. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Um, uh, because I, I don't know if people realize we were together for 13 years. The band did this for 13 years straight. And for Solomon, I, I guess we didn't realize a lot of the, you know, inner workings of things. Cause we were like, we we're like little kids hurling our bodies through space where we got to be, what we got to do. You know, we weren't, we didn't have anything vested in the planning process like we do now. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So he needed a break from, you know, from whatever that grind uh, was at the time. And uh, um, now that this is coming back together and he now has a deep comfort level with the players, you know, the, right, the right. musicians, he's starting to feel a little bit more comfortable. And I think we've decided that if there's interest by other promoters that want to see Sky, uh, right. because we're like the best kept secret and always have been really, you know, in terms of the, the you know, the music industry. Um, I think that we're ready to, you know, we're ready to get back out there. Because if we, once we do this one show, we're going to be fixed because yeah. all of the hits are there um, and everything that you, uh, that, that feeling, I think we're going to generate that feeling that people get. As you well know, like when you were listening to the music and on Sirius, it takes you back to this certain amazing Absolutely. place Absolutely. In, your, in your life, right? Yes. Yes. Um, so that would be great if you guys could, uh, if you ladies can get out there and, and tour. I'm sure that the you won't have an issue with people coming to see you because, like I said, people yearn for that that music all over again. So mm -hmm. do you guys do much um, performing? Uh, how many gigs do you guys do? So, so the beautiful, okay, it's so dramatic. here's the beautiful thing. We laugh because we, we've, as ladies of Sky, we've had some fat years and we've had some lean years. Mm -hmm. Part of the initial start of our career as ladies of Sky was, convincing people that the brand was authentic. So and if we say ladies of sky, people. we have to explain, first of all, <laughs> we are the original three female vocalists of the group sky. So by, now once you get past that explanation, then they're like, okay, yeah, sky, right. Yeah, I remember them, I remember them. And then you got to <laughs> sing here's to you. Then you got to sing let's celebrate. Then you got to yes. sing call me, right? And that's so once that's <laughs> kind of sunk in with the promoters, then they would be like, oh, yeah, let's get Ladies of Sky. Coupled with the fact that we had the original tracks. Right. Okay. So we were track date. We were track act because no and, band and could we really. Had a good, excellent play. musical director. 
Mm. Say that again. I said we had an excellent musical director. Oh yeah, Eli. Yeah, oh, Eli so, too, but yeah. We he put he put he put a engineer. real live show together for us. So yeah. we it was we'd have good we'd have a good year and then we'd have a not so good year. But here's the thing: we are fortunate that we um, do not do music for a living. There are people who suffered deeply Horrible. during the pandemic because that's all they do. They, yeah. they live and eat and breathe music and that is what puts food on their table. And for us, um, once we, once we, you know, the, the sky thing was over, um, my sisters and I did it because we love doing what we do. So if you call us for a gig, fine. Uh, if you call us for a gig and it wasn't quite what we would want to be involved with, we had the option of saying we'll pass. You know, you know what I mean? Right. So um, so like I said, we'd have good year. We'd have years where we would have about 10 or 12 or 15 dates. And, and, um, and, and then and we'd right. have years where we might have four dates. Right. Um, but I, but again, we did interviews. go to France. We did go to Africa. Yeah. Twice. <laughs> right. Because they said, "Wow, it's really them." You know, that's the, that's the mm -hmm. that was the key factor the, of getting over that hurdle. You know, is that okay. them? Uh, yeah, that's them. <laughs> well, if I would love to see you guys in Southern California at some point, hopefully, knock on. Well, you wood, know what to that, do. Yeah, put the word out there, right? Let yeah, them know. The yeah. Yeah. Let them yeah. know that we're back, and you know. Hey, whether whether it's uh, we're we're ready to go, whether it's Ladies of Sky or Sky, I'm particularly proud because I, I want to say that we are probably the only group that is doing what we're doing, you know, that has has operated. We've had a band, then we've had an offshoot of the three females of the band. And then now we have had a we're having a recoupling. Of the band, I don't think there's any other group in our genre, in our, in our, you know, as our peers or contemporaries that are doing what we're doing. Mm -hmm. um, so we're proud of that, and we're just ready to continue the legacy as long as you know the Father above allows us to be on this planet. Amen. Amen. Let me ask you a question. You guys have such a um, such a great catalog. Do you have a favorite Sky song? And if you do, what, it, what is it? I think it? we all have favorite Sky songs. Okay. And my favorite Sky song, it's not even a song. It was played, but it wasn't promoted uh, like the rest of them. And that is a song that actually Tommy wrote called Let Love Shine. Mm. That is my favorite Sky song because Tommy really knew how to write for the three of us. Mm. He, really, he knew with that harmony. You know, not taking Please anything not. away from Saul or taking anything away from Randy or anybody else that wrote. But it's something about him, his, when he wrote a song, we didn't even have to think about the harmony. It was just, mm -hmm. and so Let Love Shine is my favorite. Scott song. Okay, all right. Dolores? Um, I have two. Okay. Um, Bad Boy, because I love the harmonies on that. Um, and um, I, one of our keyboard players, Wayne Willens, our last keyboard player, wrote this kind of jazzy tune for me called In Slow Motion. Um, and for me, that's one of my favorite tunes because it mm. it it made me feel like I was this Ella Fitzgerald Lena Horn kind of chick. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> so <clears throat> my favorite, uh, I, I love Here's to You. That's one of my favorites too. I was gonna I say love that. Here's to You because that was I, and I, I think I loved it more when I found out that Randy um came to came to see uh my particular lead vocal sound as a signature sound for the group. I, I, I mean, I'm kind of proud of that accomplishment because, uh, you know, in the field of individuals and bands that we came up with, yeah. you know, you had to be a different, you had to be sound different. You know what I mean? And I think mm -hmm. that's the thing that's kind of set us apart. The oh, fact yeah. of our, our vocals and how we blend together, only sisters can blend like that. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. it created this unique, uh, unique sound. 
Um, and another song, uh, it's so much stuff from our last two albums that I thought was just great music because we did work wow. with some outside uh, producers on on that those two albums. And um, uh, it didn't get the airplay I think that it deserved. But Sky's the Limit is one of my favorite, oh, yeah. favorite, my daughter favorite too. songs. <laughs> uh to this day it just it, it just says it all it just says it all as far as who we are the fact that um oh i forgot the guy's name uh, i know one of them was charles but they wrote that song specifically and they threw in start of a romance into the song so just listen to that one if you haven't heard it todd sky's the limit listen to it and then tell me what you think <laughs> i'll go back and listen to it my yeah. favorite too is uh here's to you and start a romance okay yeah okay. those are my two i love those um, all right, ladies, anything else you, we, we, wow, we covered a lot. Um, yeah, we did. <laughs> uh, I know 2023 is going to be a little busy for you, but that's a good thing, I Ooh, think, right? Yeah. So, it's a super good thing. Um, I'm just hoping that, you know, the, the, the health climate in the world continues in a positive, uh, place, you know, because there's, always these uncertainties who would have thought that you know we would have been dealing with this, the 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 pandemic and that life would have just changed in in basically an instant um so i'm just i i kind of take everything with a little bit of cost you know caution and and, and say you know we're going to see as long as things head in the direction that they're heading in um we should have a really great musical 2023 and I'm looking yeah. forward to, you know, enjoying that and just continuing to enjoy my sisters because yeah. I love these chicks, man. Yeah, and, 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 we and are we just, we have so married. much fun together. We're, we feel like daughter. little kids. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, things, it's like you said, things are, you know, 2023. I mean, we're winding down to the end of the year and um, we're just so happy for people as like herself, who continues to want to, you know, speak with us and find out where we're coming from, you know, and what we're doing, that you are one of those folks that helps to keep Ladies of Sky and Sky alive. Oh, thank you very much for that. And I appreciate that. And um, I just think it's a testament to you ladies and other groups um, music's supposed to me, music is supposed to make you feel good. And I think we're missing that in, in some respects, you know, I think everyone's already on the defensive and just listen to some music and relax. Jesus, you know, <laughs> the yeah. Savage beast. yeah, exactly. And I think we were talking earlier about some of the music that is out today. I think that sort of put, puts people it on just high level, you know what I mean? It's like, what you want, man? amps them up in yeah. a bad way it does and right? and, and it, but it also it sadly also speaks to the way they're living see you know if you look at uh, the themes of the music that we sang it it speaks to the lives and the happiness and the joy that we encountered in both our home lives you know what I mean? Because all right. of us grew up in a certain household, type of household. And some of the music today really speaks to the sad state of affairs in the households and the homes of young people coming up. So I just hope that, you know, as things move forward in this world and in this life, that they grow out of that, you know, because we're all still here ready to show you what the what the happy world looks like you know what i mean and so if you just take a moment you know we'll we'll be happy to kind of i i ask people all the time do you need a hug <laughs> <laughs> right 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 you need a laugh you need a smile you know i got one so you know but we're going to keep on doing what we do yep. and everyone is welcome to join us absolutely right. Uh, thank goodness for for you ladies. And like I said, other groups out there. Now, how can people reach out to you? Are you guys real big on social media or? Oh, my goodness. We've got all this social media. Thanks to our marketing director. I might mention Miss Asa Lovechild, who has really uh, consolidated and organized all of our social media. And um, so we're on Instagram. 
Uh, I think it's the official Ladies of Sky. We're on Facebook, Ladies of Sky. Um, and we are we will be developing a sky website. Yeah. Um, we're on uh, uh, ladies of sky is www.ladiesofsky.com. Now I'm gonna spell it because some people spell ladies all the way wrong. So <laughs> it's L A D I E S O F S K Y Y. You can join us on any of those. Uh, you know, if you if you if you Google us, all of our social media will come up. Um, and you can also contact us through uh, our manager, my husband, Austin Kwame Wilkinson. And you have all our contact information, Todd. If you don't, I'm sure Ace will make sure you have it. And so if anybody wants to reach out to you to reach out to us, feel free to do so. Feel free. Mm -hmm. Yep. Right. And we'll post the Ladies of Skies information in the show notes on this episode, as well as on our website at bringbacksellmusic.com. All right. Denise Dolores. Bonnie, it was a real pleasure speaking to you today. Yeah, I'm glad you had fun. And you guys are welcome back anytime. That's yay. Lee, anytime you want to come back, if you got something you want to promote, uh, please let so me know. So we're gonna come back and give you a full report on the show because we'll have some uh we've got a full team coming in that's gonna videotape the night. And so we'll make sure that you get to, you know, report to the world, um, you know, how how things went. OK. OK. Are you going to post that like on YouTube or how? It will probably be posted on YouTube. Yep. OK. All right. Yep. And like I said, we'll have all that information on uh, on our website at bringbacksellmusic.com. Uh, ladies, good luck with everything in 2023. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, keep Thank us you. posted. And uh have a safe and happy holiday. Bring some Thank love you. to the world. Thank, Thank you. you. Hey, we, we always got we enough love. Bring it 24-7. That's right. All right. Denise, Dolores, Bonnie, that's the Ladies of Sky on the Bring Back Soul Music podcast, and we'll be right back. Calling all lovers of soul music. The time to make soul music relevant again is now. You've been listening to the Bring Back Soul Music podcast with Todd Woodson. If you enjoyed today's show, be sure to tell a friend. Make sure you never miss an episode by subscribing to our newsletter at bringbacksoulmusic.com. Well, that's our show for today. I'd like to thank my special guests, the Ladies of Sky, Denise, Dolores, and Bonnie. You can find out more about the Ladies of Sky on their social media sites, as well as on our website at bringbacksoulmusic.com. Don't forget, you can listen to the Bring Back Soul Music podcast on iTunes, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, and Pandora. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel at Bring Back Soul Music TV. If you have any questions or comments, please email us at comments at bringbacksoulmusic.com. I'm Todd Woodson. Thank you for joining us. See you next week.